Yo! I know that this uh, headset hasn't exactly been popular in the past, but I think I finally got the settings where they need to go for it to be okay, for it to be usable for these TGS Life videos. By the way, uh, did you guys uh, ever hear about the man with the uh, the invisible dick? Yeah, he uh, he came out of nowhere. But um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a joke. That is a joke. That's whoa. That's a good joke. Now you get to hear every little noise I make. If I go, normally, you, well, you would hear that, but not quite so breathy. You get to hear my every from being a fat ass. So that's cool. TJ now in... <gasps> um, do you have an exit plan from YouTube and the Amazing Atheist channel? How much longer uh, do you plan on making videos? Uh, I have no plans to stop. Uh, I have no real... I mean, I got an audience and they're still paying attention to what I have to say. I'd imagine that you know, if people stop giving a shit, that's when I'll stop, too. Uh, but people will continue to give a shit, so I continue to give a shit. Because, uh, as long as they give a shit, I make, uh, money. Because that's, uh, how YouTube works for, you know, people like me. And, uh, the second they stop giving a shit, and I stop making money, I'll probably have a lot less incentive to do this, and I'll move on to other things. Probably begging on the streets since I have no skills other than this. And even this, I, I'm, you know, I'm not that great at, so. Just a little bit better than your average motherfucker. Will you ever make little fat babies? If I ever do, I will eat them. I will bake them into a pie. So, you know, maybe I've had some before, and they wound up in that oven back there. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Uh, that'd be delicious. Um, I'm having a bit of an internal dilemma. I'm not sure whether I should ask my question now or wait a little while so that my question is closer to the top. Well, you made the right decision, sir, because guess what? Your question's being asked. And the question is, fuck it, I'll ask it now. Uh, do you think that there is any hope for humanity, or do you think that we are doomed to drive ourselves to extinction? I wouldn't say we're going to drive ourselves to extinction. I mean, you know, there's other methods. We could fly to extinction. We could skip to extinction. We could casually stroll to extinction. Hey, doggy. Hey, little doggy. Well, you're not little, but still. Hey, doggy. Hey, you're more important than my audience. You're more important. Um, I'm just fucking with you guys. He's He's not important at all. He's just a fucking dog. Um, I love them, though. Uh, drive ourselves to extinction, huh? You know, I don't know. I mean, we're bound to go extinct at some point. I mean, uh, the, the entire universe is doomed to destruction, ultimately, if uh, modern cosmology is to be believed. And it is, uh, most likely. So, uh, the human race, one way or the other, is going bye-bye. Will it be by our own hand? At this point, that does seem like the most likely culprit, doesn't it? I mean, uh, you know, as much threat as... I mean, there's there's tons of threats out there in the universe. There's black holes, there's fucking meteors. Uh, our own planet has plenty of threats. There's uh, super volcanoes, and we don't even know what else. Um, we have some idea. I mean, there's been so many mass extinctions on this planet. You know, the climate could get fucked. We don't know. Uh, but it, it does seem more likely that we'll fuck ourselves up through nuclear weapons or genetically modified super viruses or um, you know, stuff like that. So I mean, it's uh, that, that does, I mean, like, I think that um, there's some out there who, some like very alarmist science out there that puts our chances as low as 50% for surviving the next 100 years. I'm not quite so pessimistic as that, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised. 
You know, I, I if if this species annihilated itself, I wouldn't be like, <gasps> I can't believe it. You know, I, and I think that anyone who who's looking at the situation objectively, um, like if you're an alien species that's just studying the human race, I bet you there. I mean, it, if if there is an alien race that's been studying us, I don't think there has been. Just putting that, I don't I don't believe that. But if there was, they must be sitting by the fucking clock. And just watching it and fucking placing bets. Like, when do you guys think they'll fucking wipe themselves out? Uh. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of hope for that. But uh, but you know, we could get past it. But we still have other obstacles besides ourselves. We're our own predilection towards uh, destruction is is just one of the things that that might fuck us up. Uh. Why did you have a gun pointed at your head? I was doing a blog TV show to raise money for Free Speech Vids, which is a website that I tried to do a few years back that failed. And um, there was a guy there, um, Chris Anderson, better known as um, Fake Sagan. Uh, I think he has some kind of channel now. I don't, I don't know what what it is. I think it's the the uh, the. Uh, the, the the terrorist something about being a terrorist because he thinks he's like this hardcore guy um, so he uh, he he was basically he got drunk and he started doing crazy shit like waving a gun around and cutting himself uh, so when Blog TV saw the kind of show what you know what was going on in the show they're like we better cut this shit off because you know this is this is bad for our image so they cut the show off and. Uh, and I jokingly said to Case, I'll be like, well, because he goes by Case. Um, he thinks that, like, I guess because he used to call himself a hard case, even though he's some privileged little bitch from, like, New England who <laughs> comes from, like, a really rich area. But he's he's a hard case. So um, I think he maybe he's a head case. He calls himself a hard case. I think head case would be more appropriate. Um, anyway, so he... Uh, he, I, I said some to him like, "Oh, well, it's no big deal. The, the show, whatever, you know, it was at least an entertaining show, so don't worry about it. I'll just tell him like a crazy guy took over the show." I was joking with him, so he's like, "So he gets really butt hurt, extremely butt hurt, and uh, and he's just like, he asked me something like, are, are you scared of me?'" I'm like, "No," and he points, then he fucking reaches over and puts his gun right against my head. He's like, "Are you scared now?" And I'm like. I was too drunk to actually be scared, but I'm like, I better say yes, because otherwise he's probably going to fucking take it further. So I was like, yeah, I'm scared now. And he just held it there, and he had this look on his face like... Like, I could just tell he's contemplating whether or not he should actually shoot me. So I realized, like, I don't need... I'm not going to let him make this decision. So I instantly went back, pushed the gun forward, grabbed his hand, made sure it was going to be pointed away from me, in case it did discharge. Uh, it did not discharge. He relinquished it after I, you know, overpowered him. Thankfully, I'm larger than he is. Um, so I overpowered him, took the gun away. I don't know why I didn't beat the shit out of him afterwards. I was, for some reason, in, ex in an extremely forgiving state of mind. Um, his girlfriend or uh, wife or whatever she was at the time... Uh, came over and, and hugged him and started calming him down and look, it's okay, it's okay, you know, uh, and you know he he just he started crying and uh, then you know he he ran outside and I had to go chase him down and and you know like go I, I mean I basically had to go and like comfort him as I would a child and I was like hey what's up slugger. <laughs> And uh, and he starts going on and on about how uh, how he wishes uh, he wishes he could have been a cop or something and I wanted to be a cop but I couldn't because my leg and da 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 and um, you know it's funny because he's like this big anti-authoritarian anarchist who hates cops so I was just kind of snickering at him um, but you know I I stayed friends with him for a while because I mean he was an interesting guy and intelligent but. You know, he was fucked up, and I kind of have realized since then that it's a bad idea to associate with people like that simply because, you know, you're you're really putting your life in unnecessary risk just even 
poking that fucking hornet's nest. Um, can you describe your kinky sex toys in greater detail? I think many people in your audience would benefit from knowing details about sex toys. How many colors biggest gnome-shaped? Um, I have a, a wide variety of, uh, of sexual implements. Um, you know, I, I, I don't have the largest collection that I've ever seen, but it's a, it's a fair collection. Um, I have um, dildos, butt plugs, vibrators, whips, floggers. Uh, I have a... I don't know what it's called. It's like, I guess it's a, a, a crop or a cane of some kind. Um, I have a paddle. I have, uh, I have, uh, some gags. I have a, a mouth gag that holds your mouth open like that. And I have uh, a ball gag. And I have, um, I have, uh, that's about it, really, I think. So that's that's my oh, and I have some inflatable stuff too. Some things that they uh, not like a sex doll, but I have things that are insertable that you can inflate once they're inside. Um, I won't go into explicit detail, but you can you can use your imaginations. You're very imaginative people. Um, have you ever experienced sleep paralysis? If yes, how was it, and what did you see? Well, first of all, sleep paralysis is not always accompanied by visual hallucinations. Uh, I have had sleep paralysis. I had it pretty frequently as a, a, a teenager. Have not had it very much as an adult. Uh, usually, I would just become unable to move, and I would become convinced of a presence in the room. Uh, I would have a, the the sense of a presence in the room. Uh, Usually I would be unable to move to check for a presence. Uh, there were, of course, other times when I did have uh, the visual hallucination element, the uh, hypnopopic or hypnogogic hallucinations. I forget which distinction is which, but um, one of the two. And uh, they were manifest in the form of uh, uh, a strange demonic figure that was... Uh, robed and uh, and had uh, tattooed markings on its face um, I had uh, at least three encounters with that um, entity which were uh, the first time was I woke up I felt a presence but I was not as paralyzed as usual so I lifted my head up I saw um some figure standing at the end of my bed, it made this motion, which uh, is actually the motion from the aliens in um, Dark City. Um, and it made that motion for me to go to sleep, and so I, I did. I just like, okay, well, it's just some weird thing in my room, and it did the hand motion, so I'm just gonna lay down and just go back to sleep. And then I woke up the next morning like, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, so I, I made a resolution that next time I was going to uh, to attack it. And so the next time I saw it, uh, just like a few weeks later, I I jumped up and tried to to grab it, you know. And uh, of course, because it's it wasn't actually real, it just vanished the second I, I lunged at it, um, you know. Uh, then I looked up and I saw its head floating in the air for a second, and then that dissipated as well, uh, which was strange. And then the other time uh, I was laying, it was a, a couple years later, I was laying in bed and uh, and I saw, um, I just, I, ha I, was, I was laying on my side and I had my eyes closed, and I realized that... I just realized it was there. I just had this sense of its presence, and I opened my eyes, and of course it's standing there, so I just punched it. I tried to punch it. Um, and it, it, it basically just... It floated backwards into the wall, and then vanished the second it hit the wall. Uh, actually, there was one encounter with uh, that sort of hallucination um, prior to that, where I was in my room as, as a young boy, uh, probably around uh, 
eight, nine, ten, around that age range, uh, where I just saw it walking across my room uh, into uh, a little corner of my room that was blocked from my view from my bed, um, a little uh, indented area, and I, I, I didn't see it. Uh, I kind of stared at that area all all night, just waiting for it to, you know, to reemerge. Of course, it never did. Um, and you know, for a while, I believed that the this was an actual entity that I'd encountered. But then I read about, um, you know, uh, sleep paralysis and uh, hypnopopic, hypnogogic hallucinations, basically hallucinations as you fall into sleep or as you're coming out of sleep. Uh, and they can be very realistic. But uh, when I basically realized that it had been hallucination was um, was when I thought about the motion that it used to make me go back to sleep, because it was the exact motion of the creatures from Dark City, which told me that it was... which was a movie that I had been very fond of at the time uh, and was fresh in my mind because I had just recently seen it um, and so that told me that this was something that was coming from my mind this was not something that actually existed um, but you know obviously it's still very scary and I have not seen them uh, in my adult life so uh, thankfully I've not experienced sleep paralysis in years I've not had uh, the visual hallucinations in years, nor have I had this strong sense of a presence. Um, so that's that's very good. Um, how do you think sexual repression is uh, so important to... Re why? Oh, sorry. Why do you think sexual repression is so important to religion? Any ideas how this came about? I can see they're against science and logic, but sex? Maybe I'm missing something. The only thing that I can think of and this is just total armchair psychology bullshit. It's probably wrong. But it does seem to be a trend. And this is something that I know from being uh, involved in the BDSM community and, and reading a lot of BDSM material from, from people who are, you know, dominants and submissives of both genders and with all different manner of, of uh, dynamics. I know that chastity is extremely prevalent among uh, male submissives. And it seems to be because chastity makes them feel more submissive for prolonged periods of time. Like, after they come, they they a lot of them are not as submissive. So the only thing I could think of about sex is that perhaps... Uh, repressing people sexually makes them more submissive overall. And that would, of course, be something that religion uh, desired to do. And, of course, if you repress sex, people are still going to have sex. People are still going to have sexual thoughts. And if you make that sinful, then you've really got your hooks into them. Because now, every time they, 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 they do something sexual, they feel they've sinned, and they feel they must atone. And if you are uh, controlling the religion and you're the one pumping them full of this fear, then that's the perfect, you know, in. Because then every time they sin, every time they uh, they perceive themselves to have sinned, that just ingratiates them to you more because now they, they feel the need to seek uh, forgiveness. Which is probably why the Catholics invented uh, the confession booth. So that you could come and confess your sins, most of which are going to be sexual in nature. So I mean I think it's it's a it's a it's a good control mechanism for a number of reasons. When did you become a Michael Moore clone? That's not fair. I'm not as fat as Michael Moore. Um, is there anything that you like but are ashamed to admit? Um, I'm somewhat ashamed of my my fondness for. TV sitcoms that at the time they were on I thought were stupid and you know I, I, I mean I still think shows like Friends are retarded but I, I like The Cosby Show, I like Roseanne I like um, I like a lot of those old shows and, and those old TV shows that were considered shit at the time I think it's because now 
what we have on TV is so much worse than that that it it just seems brilliant by comparison. Um, and I'm I'm also into the X Files, which um, you know I I'd watched the X Files somewhat as a kid, but not I was never a big fan, never like a huge fan, and now I'm just starting to kind of watch the whole series from the beginning, and I'm 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 like most of the way through the first season, so. I'm I'm watching a lot of old TV shows from the 90s and 80s. Uh I guess I'm somewhat ashamed of that, but not not so much that I won't admit it here. Um You often say you'd never leave America, but you're not interested in seeing other countries. So my question is, are you afraid of the cultural difference? What makes perfect sense in America might not be the same in another country. I'm not talking about your typical questioning routine. I mean, living somewhere else might change your train of thought, your logic, and ultimately who you are. Is this why? Do you feel so comfortable with who you are that you don't want to see yourself altered? Um, I have a hard enough time adjusting myself to the culture that I already live in. So, uh, acclimating to, to a whole new culture is not something I want to do, especially because I don't like this one. Uh, I think there's other cultures in, in the world I'd like even less. Maybe there's some I'd like more, but I don't, I don't want to roll the dice. This one's bad enough. I don't, I'm not trying for something even worse than this. At least this one I'm familiar with. You know, I got enough, I got enough shit in my head. I don't need to be dealing with, with external stuff, too. Um... TJ, even though this may not impair the ability to fall asleep, it's not until bedtime that many people's minds begin to race. How will I handle this or that? Do I see myself doing that, what I do, 5, 10, 15 years from now, etc., etc.? Does the carnival in your mind kick into high gear after you've elected to call it a night? And if so, what are some of your worries slash concerns? My mind is always like that, though. It's no different at, at night. Um... I mean, granted, it, it, it's like that at night, but it's like that all day, every day, unless I'm distracting myself. That's why, increasingly, if I'm going to bed, I, I, I watch uh, I watch some kind of a show until I'm just, you know, uh, you know, dead to the world. Until I literally cannot think anymore. Um, because otherwise, I'm just, I'm lost in my own thoughts. And, uh... I guess my concerns are usually just like am I am I really doing what I'm what I should be doing? Uh I wanted to be a storyteller, not a commentator, but it seems that a commentator is what I've become and I guess sometimes I feel like like I should be telling stories and and being creative and not necessarily just um uh, offering opinions about the world and culture and politics and art and whatever else. I feel like I should be creating something of my own and putting it out there in the world. But um, hopefully one day I'll be able to do that. But uh, it doesn't seem... I mean, right now I have neither the time nor the uh, the energy left over after what I have to do to to make a living. Uh, did you get invited to the National Atheist Party Convention 2013? It starts in a couple of days, and a lot of famous atheist YouTubers got invited, such as Cult of Dusty and Aaron Ra. No. Those people don't like me. They don't like me at all. Um, I don't like them either. They, uh... I don't know. I, I really don't know what it is about me that makes me so, uh, different from the rest of them. I guess that I don't uh, espouse quite the same thing they do, and they're so limited in their in their perception of uh, of what atheism needs to be that they can't accept an, another opinion. It has to be, you know, if you don't puppet their views, then they're not interested. You know, and it, it's, uh, you know, and, and it's kind of strange because, you know, Cult of Dusty is such a... a a disgusting, stupid fuck. I mean, I, I, I've... <laughs> I read his shit on Facebook all the time, and he's just... 
He's a, he's a, like, I don't understand how I'm considered a sexist and all these feminists come after me when all that guy does is sit around and bitch about how, like, women are stupid and, you know, oh, you know, you might not agree with what I'm about to say, but women, man, they crazy. It's like, no, fuck you, you fucking sexist piece of shit. I wish someone would just fucking hit that dude upside the head with a brick. Might actually make him more intelligent. And Aaron Ra is, um... I mean, who gives a fuck about that boring piece of shit? <sighs> I'm not spiteful, though. Um... Yeah, I'm tr No, no. Trying to let go of the anger. Trying to let go of the drama. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, to evolve past that. But, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um... TJ, do you feel that gay rights, I'm a gay male, should be at the top of the chain of national effort as far as civil rights go? Um, it's always been vaguely bizarre to me in one sense how we view civil rights as this thing that we apply to one group at a time. Like, oh, we, we, gotta, uh, we gotta free the slaves. All right, now we freed the slaves. Now we got to get women the right to vote. Okay, we did that. Okay, now uh, we gotta we gotta get uh, gay marriage. Okay, now uh, we gotta get uh, transgender people to uh, be accepted as uh, as you know as much as anyone else. And it, it just seems like well, can't we just shouldn't we just do this all at once? Shouldn't we just view it as human rights and it should be regardless of any of this shit? But I guess human beings, for whatever reason, don't think that way. They're not going to go for the, the rights for everyone package deal, so instead we have to do it slow and stupid, like a bunch of slogging fucking retards. Like, okay, well, we'll get rights, we'll get this right for this group, then we'll get this right for that group, and every fucking group it takes like 30 or 40 years to get them their rights. And that's just a waste of fucking time. You know, we, we just need to have the ideal of, of everyone has these rights regardless of their race or their gender or their uh, gender identity or their sexual orientation or whatever. Just let them fucking all have the rights that every human being should have. And rights are not just a, a legal thing, it's, it's a cultural thing, it's a matter of cultural perception. And, uh, you know, if someone is being treated like shit because they're different from the norm, then the people treating them like shit need to be dealt with in one way or another. Because, uh, you know, the one right that I don't think anyone should have is the right to be a bigoted piece of shit who just goes off on a tangent about how horrible everyone else is. Um, you know, I mean, hey, if you ju if that's just if they just want to fucking go and and yell at uh at somebody, if they you know, if they just want to go yell in their corner about how uh, this and that and how whatever. I mean, I believe in freedom of speech. If you want to fucking be a retard that joins the the KKK or something, go ahead. But you know, our culture as a whole should look at those people and be like, what a bunch of fucking idiots. The people who hate gays or who hate transgender people or who, uh, or you know, who, who hate uh, uh, abortion rights or whatever, those people should be looked at the same way that most people look at the Ku Klux Klan or the Westboro Baptist Church. They should be a, a, a fringe of shitty people that technically we're going to allow them to have their say, but really we don't grant them or we don't bestow them any sort of cultural clout. Um, TJ, you said you are really into big black asses. If this is so, how come you are married to a white woman instead of a black woman with a big juicy ass? Well, I, I like big black asses, but I like, I like big asses in general. And, I mean, really, I don't even. I mean, you know, I like I like of all asses. I mean, you know, as long as they're they're nice and shapely. So, um, but my wife has a big ass, but it's a big white ass, which is just as good as a big black ass or a big uh, Asian ass or a big uh, Native American ass or a big uh, Indian ass or whatever. I don't care as long as it's big, and even if it's not big, as long as it's 
shapely and, and nice. I don't care, you know? And it's not like, uh, it's not like a, a racial thing. It's, it's just that black women t tend to have large asses, so, so there's definitely, uh, if you're an ass lover who likes big ass, chances are you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of, uh, a lot of black women in your spank bank. Uh, TJ, do you have a favorite comic book female heroine or villainess? Do you have one you'd want to fuck the most? Something tells me it would be Storm for a big black ass. What is this? What's all the black ass all of a sudden? All this black ass. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot of, uh, of comic book females, really. Because it's been so long since I read comics, but uh, yeah, I mean Storm is good. I mean, who who knows? I mean, they're really the comic book women are pretty much all drawn to be fuckable, if I recall correctly. Like pretty much every comic book woman is like, wow, because um, they're they're basically drawn just to appeal to that that market of guys who either don't get laid or are too you know they're too young or socially awkward or whatever to get laid so pretty much all of them are just like heavingly large bosoms and and you know s you know really fucking hourglass figure with the big ass jutting out or whatever kind of ass you like cuz not everyone likes that but they're all drawn to be sexually attractive um so pretty much any of them really right i mean no one's going to be like, I don't want that. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> TJ, describe the perfect penis. Uh, long and, and thick, like a fucking oak tree. And, uh, you know, powerful. Uh, I would enjoy watching you do a review of Oz the Great and Powerful. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do one now. Um, Oz the Great and Powerful. Uh, James Franco. I mean, a lot of people said James Franco was miscast. I don't think he was. I think he, he did a decent job. Uh, a lot of the CG characters were great. The little China girl, I don't remember her name. She was fucking great. Very sympathetic. Made you feel um, this uh, urge to protect her because, of course, she's so fragile. And uh, the monkey, whatever his name was, he was fucking funny. I mean, you know, his lines were, were pretty spot on. Um, the witches were all boring. Just bland, bland, bland characters. Uh, Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch of the West <laughs> sucked. Uh, the, the makeup and, and look of the Wicked Witch of the West was just bizarre. It was like they they, 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 they wouldn't commit to her being ugly without her being kind of set. Like, they're like, they're like okay, she, we, she's the Wicked Witch, so she's gotta be ugly. But she should still be kind of sexy, so make sure she's still got, like, a good facial structure, but just give her, like, a long nose. Okay, I, I hate to tell you guys this, but just because you make a hot girl green and give her a bit of a nose, that's not going to make her just, like, instantly ugly, especially not when you give her massive green tits and, uh, and like, really, like, a smooth complexion and all this stuff. I mean, she does not look like the Wicked Witch of the West. And she didn't even do the voice, which really pissed me off. I don't understand how anyone felt like it was okay for her to not do the fucking voice. The Wicked Witch has a specific manner of speaking that is very iconic. And uh, Mila Kunis really didn't even portray that. She just, uh, she just talked like she always talks. It was like, you know, Meg Griffin is, is the fucking Wicked Witch all of a sudden. Uh, so that was bad, but I mean, the story overall was, was pretty solid, the visuals were amazing, the, the, all of the production values were extraordinary, top of the fucking line, um, and like I said, many of the characters were good, many of the characters were sympathetic, it was really the villains that were bland, and James Franco's love interest was bland, um, just a lot of very bland scenes with blandly written characters, but overall, uh, a better movie than not. Uh, I would say it's it's solidly entertaining. It keeps your interest. Uh, it's it's not something that you know. It's not like it, it's not going to go down as a classic like the original. 
it's probably not even going to be uh, a movie that people talk about in, 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 in like a few months. Like after Star Trek and Superman and Iron Man 3, like no one's even going to fucking remember Oz. But, you know, as far as uh, ringing the bell and, and signaling that the blockbuster season has begun, you could do worse. I think it's a pretty good movie. I mean, you know, since uh, Jack, the, the giant piece of shit, flopped on its ass. Uh, have you ever played chess? If so, do you like it? Are you any good? I have played chess. I know the rules to chess. I am horrible at chess. I do not enjoy chess because I am horrible at chess and I never win, ever. Um, I'm just a horrible chess player. If chess is indicative of overall intelligence, then I have to confess that I am a stupid man because I cannot beat anyone at chess. I, I'm the kind of guy that, like, if I go and I set the computer to, like, easy, it will still beat me because I just... Whatever strategies I develop are just... They don't seem to work. Um, so, yeah, I'm horrible at chess. Uh, do you have any bizarre fetishes not yet known to your audience that you're willing to share? I don't know. I've probably talked about some of my fetishes before, but most of them just have to do with... Um, degradation, dehumanization, humiliation, um, to some extent or another. I mean, I think that a lot of times in my mind, and my fantasies, things can go a lot further than they actually can in real life. But, you know, uh, that's, I think that's probably everyone to an extent, except for a select few people that just have this ability to, to, uh, to go that, that, they just have an extreme enough personality that they're just going to go the whole way with with whatever they're doing. But, um, you know, I like... Um, I mean, I, I have certain masochistic tendencies, even though I am a wuss, and um, there's uh, an element of, of just liking being degraded, but it has to be on a specific... I mean, like, for every... for every moment of degradation, there have to be several moments of of uh of being comforted or whatever you know like if if we're going to do something like that where it's like okay you're going to be put in this position and we're going to you know do whatever and it's going to be I don't I don't want to get too specific but you know if if it's like okay let's uh, you're going to be chained to this wall and then we're going to fucking like whip you a few times and fucking call you a piece of shit and whatever else gets you off uh, but, you know, then afterwards, it's like, you know, hey, you know, good job, you did a good job, you're you're good, you're wonderful. That's how, how I need to be treated. Um, so, I mean, there there's a, there's a lot of, like, things, though. I mean, like, pretty much 90% of the fetishes out there I can at least see the appeal of, and I can at least try. There's, there's things out there that I wouldn't like, um, you know, like shit that seems to be pretty... That's a, a niche, you know. There's, like, a very specific niche of people who are like, yeah, shit. Not me. Not into that. Um, I don't like feet very much, although I do like my wife's feet. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a foot fetishist overall. Like, if I'm looking through porn and there's, like, a close-up shot of the feet, I scroll right on past that shit. Like, I don't care. Don't give a shit about your feet. Sorry. No concern of mine. Um, but you know, I I got tons of bizarre fetishes. I mean, there there's there's a bunch out there. I mean, I have a I have a porn blog on Tumblr. If if anyone wants to just send me a PM, I'll fucking send you the link to it. I guess if you really wanna go down that path of of knowing all my weird little kinks and shit. Um, have you officially gone bonkers, TJ? Uh, you know, yes, I think I did it years and years ago, and no one even noticed. Uh, how many serious relationships have you been in, and why did the other ones end? Uh, I've only really been in one serious relationship prior to to Holly. Uh, that was with a, a girl named Cherie, who I really shouldn't call a girl because she was uh, really a woman. I was a boy at the time because I was only about 17 when we got together, and she was about 30-something, 30 32. So, I mean, I it was... I was like a baby and she was a milf and uh uh you know it it was uh it was an interesting relationship it lasted about 9 10 months um 
but then eventually it got to the point where she just like sat me down and is like, you know, this ain't working out, so you gotta go. And um and I mean, you know, I, I don't know. It was very strange for me at the time, it was kinda surreal. I was just like, Well, wow, that's really out of left field, I don't understand, but okay. And uh and then it was over and I, I kinda had this sense of abandonment for a while after that and I had this thing where for a while I, I didn't want anyone to leave which is very strange for me because I'm not a I'm not really a, a clingy person to towards most people that I know but like if anyone would leave for any sort of length of time like oh I'm going to the store I'd be like oh shit I wonder if they never come back so I had some abandonment issues afterwards but uh, I got over them uh, in about uh, probably about another nine months really so it was nine months with her and then nine months recovering um, and then I, I had a, a couple of very brief in between relationships that just don't work out because I'm a strange person and uh, a lot of people can't handle my, my strangeness and I'm a lot stranger than I probably come off even on here um, I mean I don't I guess I don't even know if I come off strange at all but I'm definitely a strange person in real life and I have a lot of strange ideas in my head and I communicate things in very difficult to comprehend ways and uh, it kind of took me meeting Holly who has the same really way of communicating uh, and we kind of hit it off because we understood each other and it's very difficult for both of us to find people that understand us so that's how we knew it was uh, it was a good thing and um, you know I know that the thing with Holly is serious because she actually has my name tattooed on her uh, which is which is cool because I never thought I'd be someone who had uh, who I'd never be a person that someone else would tattoo on their body but uh, she has a tattoo of my name on her chest. Um, on a she has, she has a, a tattoo of a crow eating uh, some meat, like some carrion, and then it has a banner underneath it, and in the banner it says TJ and Holly, and it's a really cool tattoo. And uh, and I just think about it a lot of times and how how dedicated that that feels to me. And it, it it's like so much more permanent than just the the ring on her finger. And I don't even have a ring yet, but but she has that that dedication on her skin, and uh, and that makes me feel good. Uh, TJ, where do you get your clothes? I'm six six, and I'm never able to find clothes that fit right. I know you have a similar build, so please share your secrets. Um, JC Penny, big and tall section. They almost always have shit on sale. That's where I go. Uh, what keeps you from killing yourself? I don't really have any desire to. Even when I become depressed, I really never want to end it all. I just want to end the depression. I want to continue living because I have a lot of things I want to do. I've never been at the point, and I've never, I've never, I guess maybe it's because I always have the sense that I can still accomplish anything that I want to in the future. Um, I've never really, no matter how depressed I've been, I've never had the sense that I was incapable of doing uh, the things I really want to do in life. Um, and maybe maybe that's a bit of uh, irrationality, but but uh, it's kind. I guess it's kept me from being suicidal because if you feel like you have something to do and you feel like you have the capability to do it, it's very hard for you to justify to yourself the desire to kill yourself. So I've never really gone down that mental path. I've never been like I should just end it all. Like even when I've had that emotional impulse, like I just wish this this shit would end. I just wish I'm tired of feeling like this. I just wish this this would be over. But it's impossible for me to want to die because there's other things that I want to continue. So really, when I get depressed, I just want the depression to end. Uh, why do you seem like such a depressed person? Speaking of depression. If you're an atheist, why don't you live your life to the fullest? Why don't you try to lose weight, go skydiving, and travel the world? If this is the only life you have, why not live it? Well, I have really no urge to travel the world. I would be scared shitless trying to skydive. And uh, losing weight? I don't know. I prefer eating. I, I mean, I, I have lost weight, though. I mean, I've lost a lot of weight. But... Uh, overall, I like to eat food, and um, that's one of the things I do because I do want to enjoy my life, and that is one of the things I enjoy. Um, but, you know, as, as as far as like, oh, you're an atheist, why don't you, you live life to the fullest? Well, if you're a Christian and you believe that there is a God, why don't you spend every waking moment trying to please Him? 
most Christians don't. They just pay lip service to it. But if you really believed it, why wouldn't you devote your every waking second to pleasing God and trying to get in His graces so that you could go to heaven and live in eternal bliss? Uh, and why would people who uh, believe that homosexuality is sinful still go have homosexual sex? Why would people who believe that uh, it's wrong to hurt others like these Catholic priests, why would they still fuck children? Why, uh, why do all these people not live in accordance to their beliefs? I think it's because human beings are just going to do what they're going to do regardless of, uh, of ideology. I think that there's there's our, our our ideas and our our uh, our way of looking at the world, and then there's the way we behave, and they're not as interconnected as people think they are. That's not to say there's no relation, but but obviously, you know, not every atheist is out there trying to make every moment awesome and living out, like I'm gonna fucking live like there's no tomorrow because there might not be. Uh, some people do that, sure. But there's plenty of Christians that do that. There's plenty of Christians who live that lifestyle, or, or Muslims, or whoever else. And then there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of atheists that like me that you know they know that one day they're going to be die and be gone forever, but they still don't give a shit. They'd rather just you know kind of hang around in their living room and eat Cheetos and watch fucking Pawn Stars. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, humanity's inconsistent. I don't know what to tell you. TJ. You should make a video of yourself shaking your bare buttocks at the camera while the song Laffy Taffy plays. I figured your ass cheeks jiggle enough for it to be entertaining. This person has submitted this question numerous times. Not only that, they've submitted it to my Tumblr numerous times, and I've even answered it to my Tumblr before, and they still submit it constantly. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm sure that that would be entertaining for some people, but, you know, I'm not going to do it, uh... At least not yet, because, um, because I don't know, I just think that, uh, I think that as long, I mean, like, the Banana Gate thing, for instance, like, that leaked and no one cared, but I think if I intentionally put something out, then people would be like, no, that's, that crosses the line. Like, if it leaks accidentally, we'll forgive it, but if you, like, actively put porn out there of yourself, we're just gonna be like, done. That's my sense of things. Uh, so we, we did a 47-minute uh, question video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, we're done. So I, I fucked up my own little outro. <laughs>